Um, so good evening everyone, my name is Nicholas Artirez. And for those who don't know, the privatization or privatization is when a government agency who used to provide a public service um, converts that, that industry or service into a privately owned business. Privatization, privatizing a certain service or industry in the United States is a common tool used within the government to cut costs and raise efficiency. Um, some industries or services that have been privatized in the past uh, are the U.S. Postal Service, such you've seen FedEx and UPS, um, the airport controls, airport operations, and utilities. However, privatizing the prisons in the United States has become a growing problem in the United States. Um, so, some facts. The United States holds around 5% of the world's population. It holds 25% of the world's prisoners. That is an absurd number. The United States has 2.2 million people incarcerated according to the sentencing project. Um, over the last 40 years, the prison population has risen 70%. So if you look to the graph, you can see the spike after the 19, late 1970s, early 1980s, right? So keep that in mind. Um, so what's the difference between a public and a private prison? A public prison is completely run and operated by the government. They do, however, outsource some jobs such as maintenance, food, and transportation to private companies to cut costs. A privately owned business or prison is completely run by a company or business. Um, they, a business is made to make a profit, right? Um, they're responsible for everyday maintenance, staffing, and all the other things that the government might have outsourced. Um, something I found interesting researching this topic was that the government is actually responsible for providing these prisons prisoners. Some of the contract, contracts these prisoners have with the government have a clause that require the prisons to be 80 to 100, 80 to 90 percent uh, filled, the beds, and if they're not, the government has to pay them a fee. So this creates an incentive for the government to keep those beds filled. Um, so how did a for-profit prison system emerge? Um, so like I said in this past graph, the late 1970s, 1980s, that's when Nixon actually declared the war on drugs. This war on drugs created um, policies such as mandatory minimums and no-knock warrants, which increased the sentencing of prisoners and increased the population of prisoners. Right now, 50% of the federal inmates are locked up on drug-related charges. This overpopulation or overcrowding in the prisons led to rising costs. The government thought that privatizing the prisons would cut costs, and it did for a little. Core Civic is the largest for-profit system, for-profit for-profit prison system in the United States. Um, they were established in 1983 in Nashville, Tennessee, and two years after they established, they actually tried buying Tennessee's whole prison system to control and operate their whole system, all the prisons. The second largest uh, for-profit prison system is the GEO Group. They came a year after the Core Civic, and they're just as bad. In 2015, they profited around 360, 350 million. The following year they profited, profited 400 million. That is crazy to think that these companies are profiting from having people imprisoned. So how do these for-profit prisons profit? Um, they profit by cutting corners in staffing, healthcare, maintenance, and employee qualifications. <clears throat> On average, private prison employees earn $5,000 less than their government counterparts and they receive 58 fewer hours of training. This leads to an increase of employee turnover which decreases the safety in the prisons. In 2016, the Justice Department reported that Private prisons had 28, a 28% higher rate of inmate-on-inmate inmate assaults and more than twice as many inmate 
assaults on staff. This is compared to public institutions. They also had twice as many illicit weapons reported in the prisons. So, in, during Obama's administration, they actually saw the prison population <coughs> fall due to Obama's um, pardonings and less strict uh, laws on drugs. So the deputy attorney, deputy attorney general at the time actually sent out a memo urging the government to cut back on the contracts with the private prisons and to try to just not use them in general. Uh, she said in the memo that these private prisons do not substantially save on costs and that they do not maintain the, sa the same level of safety or security as government-run <coughs> prisons. Less, in, less than a year later, actually six months after that memo, the, the new Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, actually re reversed his plan. Um, this is because he wants to be tough on crime and increase the sentencing. So let's talk about how these big, uh, these big corporations lobby and donate to uh, politicians. One of the, uh, Florida is actually one of the highest states in donations received by these corporations. Um, there are seven private prisons in the United States, and there's actually one 50 minutes away, as you can see in the map. These are just some numbers that these private prisons are, or this is Core Civic, which is Corrections Corporation of America, and that's how much they use to contribute to politicians, and that's how much they use to lobby to affect the laws regarding sentencing. 